Well, hey there, what's goody good, y'all? You know Craig has been your intergalactic guide through the multiverse of epic blackness that is your attention, please, for two years now. Hulu's Your Attention, Please is a dope show about cutting edge, innovative black people in their industries. And while I was cooking up season three for you, I realized that for the past year, a bunch of L's must have been hard at work because there are 10 mind-blowing shorts about black excellence that I have not seen. Initiative 29 takes that and says black stories should be heard throughout the year, every year, um, and not just in the month of February, the shortest month of the year. Instead of looking at our past and reliving traumas, we decide to look forward and write our own history. I'm just gonna get comfy while I take in all these powerfully inspiring stories. Black excellence, take me away. I come from a long line of unbothered women, black women who fought injustice on reflex, side-eyeing Jim Crow and Uncle Sam, daring their fingers to pull the trigger. I try to focus on the people whose rights are being taken away to teach them how to fight that system. When I first watched Your Attention Please, I was so excited to learn about people who were doing things that I would otherwise never have heard of. Environmental justice is about equity. How do we make sure that things are more fair for countries that have been impacted so heavily by colonialism compounded on top of climate change? If you don't see yourself in certain areas, then you don't think that you are able to actually go and do those things. That mentality is prevalent within the culture because we don't see ourselves very often in certain roles, in certain places. And so for me, your attention please is about possibility and breaking that mental construct. And it's about Afrofuturism. Now, it wouldn't be your attention please without some joy for your ear holes. Right there are the irrepressible ladies of Nolan's original pinnets and their big brassy sound. The Pinettes are black female musicians play brass band music. It's a collective of all our individual experiences. Sisters, mothers, <laughs> it's a labor of love. I think it's extremely important for people of color to tell our own stories and to write our own history because it gives us the opportunity to take accountability. If we truly want to be inclusive and more diverse with the content, it will only behoove us to have black creators behind the camera as well. We started the Tiny House Project to provide homes for trans people in need. We just wanted to make sure that people felt like they could thrive and felt like they could live and know that somebody cared about them. It's so important to tell stories, especially stories by and about black and brown people. We, as storytellers and filmmakers, do ourselves a disservice when we leave out the truth. We're always looking for truth and we're always looking for authenticity. People need to be celebrated. People need to have someone in the room when they're not there who cares and says, I can speak for you and I will do your story justice. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, I like that. And we also got Tao Lee, Prof Goff, PhD, as in DJ who drops knowledge. I am the sedimented sum of four islands. The Caribbean, Hong Kong, the British Isles, New York City, archipelagos, all of them. And looks like we took some trips too, into nature. I've been rock climbing for about 13 plus years and I'm currently a PhD student in neuroscience. I didn't necessarily identify as biracial. I just felt like society have let me know that I am black and that's it. Once you put all these tools that you've been you know, studying and putting into practice and kind of are able to tackle these things that once made you really fearful, it kind of makes you think like, well, what else is possible? It just makes me want to push even further. Are you tripping? You went to Louisa, the ancestral heart of the Afro-Puerto Rican community, and you did not invite me? 
Specifically here in Luisa, there's the music, there's the art, and the spirituality. They all come together. Esto es una herencia que de la cual estamos muy orgullosos. Man, that crab thing looks delicious. Speaking of tasty food, that looks like Chef Eric Ajapong in Ghana. When I think about West African Ghanaian food, I think about my mom and my grandmother making all these things that I grew up eating, and that was really the spirit of my restaurant. I'm so happy that I'm here because it gives me a full sense of uh, who I am as an African and as an American. And those worlds kind of collide into this one space here at Cape Coast. Being able to tell these stories and show the next generation that all of this is possible has been a gift and has opened me up to thinking about other stories that I might be able to tell and bring to the screen. And yes, indeed, toasting a seriously fine year films with brewer Chris Johnson. I didn't realize that there were pathways for me to make an impact on my community that I live in. The only way we're going to tell history correctly is if we actually tell everyone's experience. We can make sure that our future and our tomorrow is way brighter. It was here, New Orleans. A brutally disfigured body was found in the warehouse near Chalmette. Although Detective Griffin would not admit it, he was up against something malevolent, something unearthly. Voodoo, in this case, is about balance, is about a spiritual balance. And so it's this idea of combining voodoo and looking at it as this metaphor for cultural appropriation. When in you know, the right culture, the hands of the right culture that made it, something can be very beautiful and about balance and about spirituality. When in the wrong hands, it's something that can be weaponized and used for evil. But this piece is about bringing voodoo, bringing New Orleans and reclaiming that aspect of our culture in the 21st century. Initiative 29 for me was an opportunity to really see so many different styles and tastes of how to tell a story on display. It's really cool that it doesn't feel like it's any one thing, but has the opportunity for so many different voices and so many different styles of how to tell a story come together in a really harmonious way. If we see these stories and we and we could we can touch them and they're close to us, they're real to us, then we begin to live it ourselves. It's been really a joy to go and learn from all of these people and to see the impacts that, are, that they're having in their communities, in other people's lives, in the world. I find that being able to be a part of that is just priceless. That feast of inspiration has left my soul full but I can make room for more because season three is right around the corner. It's gonna be crazy. We got bugs, dogs, pizza, cowboys. They're all part of the stories about people who are building things and realizing their dreams. Oh yeah, we have an actual architect too. Metaphorical and literal building. Don't put your tray tables up yet. And from the bottom of Brother Craig's heart, I wanna thank you for coming along on this journey. We are living black history when we tell and share these stories. By lifting these folks up, we're lifting all of us up. And if you leave the world a little better than you found it, then you're a success in my book. So like I always tell you, don't be afraid to find what you love, share it with the world, and scream from the mountaintop, your attention, please. See you February 1st for season three, y'all.